All right, so when we look at moderators, because these are actually two concepts here, there's mediators and moderators. Um, a moderator variable, it really reflects it. It's, it changes the strength of the effect of a relationship between two variables. A moderator may either increase the strength of a relationship, decrease the strength of a relationship, or change the direction of a relationship as the value of the moderator itself changes. So for simplicity, for linear, for this example linear regression, our predictor will say is, is a scale or a continuous variable. Our outcome will be the same, a scale or a continuous variable. And our moderator will also be a scale or a continuous variable. We already have a relationship between the predictor and the outcome, which we could do a simple linear regression and we could go ahead and get a coefficient. Or if we were to do a multiple linear regression, we would input both the predictor and the moderator and then we would get a mathematical model. The way that the moderator works is as the moderator in it itself increases in value it actually will change the coefficient of the model. So if the moderator is low we have a certain value and the moderator increases to a middle range we have a different value and it gets to the high at the higher end of the moderator we, we then have a third value. When we look at the effect on the top row of little blue boxes for a non-moderator effect as we see with the, when the moderator itself has a low value say on a continuous scale our slope which is shown here in the uh, orange arrow has a slight rise to it. At the middle value we still maintain the same rise and at the high value we still have about the same rise. Not much change. When the moderator is actually effective we see that the low value we've got a slope at the middle value the slope actually increases and then again it changes again at the high value and so that's what we would call the moderator effect whereas the one above is a non-moderator effect mediators on the other hand are a little bit different we once again have our three variables our predictor our outcome and this time we're looking at a variable that could be a mediator. Now if we can consider all of these uh, once again as scalar continuous, we could look at from the predictor to the outcome, we would call that a direct effect which is designated by that purple arrow labeled as C. We also have a relationship between the predictor and the mediator which is designated by the orange arrow A and then we have a relationship between the mediator and the outcome which is B. The mediator in itself when we add it into the model, let me back up one second. Without the mediator, there's a relationship between the predictor and the outcome. But when we add the mediator into the model, we'll actually see that direct effect C be reduced in terms of the, the uh, coefficient. When we have a perfect mediator, the relationship between the predictor and the outcome, when we put the, this perfect mediator into the model, the relationship between the predictor and the outcome actually becomes non-significant and so that's what we know as a a perfect mediator so mediator variables specify how or why a particular effect or relationship occurs mediators describe the like the psychological process that occurs to create the relationship you know for social science studies and as such why um, there's all these dynamic properties of, of different individuals say for instance emotions beliefs and behaviors for those of you who are working with um, social science research Thank you.